Good evening, good evening. Uh, once again, um, we thank God for this privilege and this opportunity to be back in the house of worship just one more time. Thank God for those of you that are here in the sanctuary, those of you who have um, tuned into the uh, live streaming of this Bible study hour. We thank God so much for each and every one of you. Um, we just pray God's blessing upon you, uh, praying for traveling mercy for those who may be en route um, to Bible study, that God will keep them safe and protected. And we just certainly do thank God for this opportunity to be back here um, in the house of worship for this Bible study hour um, because we don't want to take for granted um, as, as I stated before, I'll say it again, that there's a lot that's going on. Um, and so we just can't take for granted that um, tomorrow is promised to us because we, we don't know um, from one day to the next the way things are going. Um, but, but the Bible encourages us to be ready, you know. Um, don't, don't let what's going on catch you by surprise. We know that these things are going to happen, and they are certainly happening. Um, but we shouldn't be surprised by them. As Jesus said to the disciples, I'm telling you these things so that you will know. So when they happen, you won't be surprised. So we know that these things are going to happen. And, and we have to continue to be steadfast and continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand. And, you know... If, if, if when our time arrive, you know, we'll be ready. We'll, we'll be ready, you know, when Christ return. And that's what all of this is about, that we be ready. We're making preparation so that we'll be ready when he returns. And so we pray that uh, this Bible study will be a blessing to you. We pray, as always, that something will be said or done that has inspired, that will inspire you. And if you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, we certainly do pray um, that you will come to the place of accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior um, be before your time here expires. We pray um, that you will give your life to the Lord. I'm going to open up in a word of prayer, and then we'll go back into our Bible study lesson that we've been dealing with for a few weeks now. And that is the um, remedy for spiritual um, wellness. Um, Father God, oh, excuse me. My bad. <laughs> All righty. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this time and opportunity. We thank you for allowing us to be back in the house of worship. Just one more time, thank you, God, for life, health, and strength. Thank you for traveling mercy, for bringing us safely here. Pray your blessings upon those that may be en route. Blessings upon each and every one that's in here. Um, blessing upon those that have tuned in virtually, Heavenly Father. Bless every family, every household um, that's represented tonight in this Bible study. Um, our Heavenly Father, God, we pray your will be done in each and every one of our lives. We pray for the perfect teaching ministry of your Holy Spirit to guide our hearts, our minds in this time of study. God, we're praying that you would add unto us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that we may know so that we may grow. And so that through us, Father, you will teach others. God, we're just praying that your will be done. I decrease that you will increase. Use me for your glory. Use me, God, for your good purpose. In Jesus the Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. And again, the remedy for spiritual wellness um, we've been dealing with for, for a few weeks now. And we're talking about um, not just um, our spiritual wellness, but we've also tied it into our physical wellness. Um, as I mentioned in previous lessons, if we get it together spiritually, we'll get it together fi um, physically. Um, because everything begins with the spiritual and we'll, 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 we'll then, um, be consciously able to, um, make better decisions about our physical well-being. And so it, it, and so it is, you know, so often when we, when we come to church, um, our physical, um, bodies are so, uh, 
worn and wounded down that, that we can't spiritually get into the service that is, that is um, generally designed to re-energize us, you know, for, for what's ahead. And so sometimes we, we come and, and physically we all beat down and worn and we, we can't even, you know, give enough attention to the God who bought us through the week and bought us to church that Sunday morning. Um, we can't even, you know, at times give God the praise that he's so worthy of because we're, we're, we're so battered and we're so worn down and we're so tired physically. And again, as we, as we began talking about this lesson, we, 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 we did so with the understanding that God is not only concerned about our spiritual well-being, God is also concerned about our physical well-being. Because if we're not, if we're not together f physically, how, how, how are we going to serve God? And so God wants, God is concerned about the total man. So we have to be concerned about the total man. And so, and so we have to get it together spiritually as well as physically. And so it's, it's important. And, and, and again, as we began this lesson and as we've talked about several different things, we talked from the spiritual aspect, we talked from the physical aspect, we gave some um, medical um, information as well. Um, and we talked about a uh, number of things that we need to begin to put in place. We, one, we need to begin to take responsibility for our well-being. We need to take responsibility um, for our health. We need to take better responsibility of the things that we're eating, the things that we're putting in our body. As a matter of fact, the, the Bible tells us that our bodies doesn't even belong to us when we accept Christ as our Savior. Our bodies, our bodies no, longer, no longer belong to us to do with whatever we want to do with them. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And so we have to, we, we have to be concerned about what we're putting in our body. And so we have to take, better, have, be, better, um, take responsibility of, of doing a much better job. And I mentioned um, a week or two ago... Um, um, if, if nothing else, uh, go and get checkups. And I told y'all we were going to spend a little time because we got to do better. We got, we got to do better. Number one, we got to begin to give God what God is worthy of. Because we'll say all the time how good God is. But we don't show it in what we're giving back. And so we got to do, do a much better job than what we've done in the past. And I'm not saying that we, we don't, but, but, but there's always room to do better. Can we honestly say, can we honestly say that we've given God the very best of our service? Can we, if we're, if we're being honest, y'all don't look at me with them, y'all don't be looking like, is he really asking? I, 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 ha, have we really given God our very best if we're if we're really being honest have we given him our best ha, has there been times or have there been instances where i could have done better where i could have done more you know and, and we we've said it time and time again it's, it's always it's always god that gets the short end of the stick you know we do whatever it is we do all week long all week long. And I said this here a, a while ago, and I'm, and I'm talking about me because I can't speak for anybody else. I'm talking about me. But, but, but I do self-examination. And I, look at, and I look at what I'm doing. I look at the life that I'm living, and I compare it with what I give to God. And this is what I did one time. And it's not, and, and again, this is this, this just me. This is just me. I looked at the amount of time I spent at work all week long. I looked at the amount of time that I spend when I'm out doing whatever I'm doing. And I look at the amount of time of what I'm doing when I'm home in the run of a week. 
I spend a lot of time doing a whole lot of stuff. And we give God one day out of the week, that's Sunday, that we proclaim as our Sabbath, our day to give God only what God deserves, nothing else, nobody else. And so when we come to church on Sunday morning, if we come to church, And if we come to Bible study on Tuesday night, if we come to Bible study, we spend one hour at the most in Bible study, maybe one hour and 15 minutes. Sunday morning, because of everything that has happened, we spend, even before now, maybe we spent, if we came to spiritual enrichment and we stayed for service, we may have spent three hours Maybe. And so you're talking about one hour on Tuesday, the 45 minutes we spent in spiritual enrichment, and then the service. We may have given God four hours of our time. And for most who come on Sunday morning, they're ready to go before we even get a benediction. But keep in mind now, we've done everything else all week long. And I said... And it's me again. I've just spent nine or ten hours on my job. And even if I don't feel like it on Sunday morning, because it's the day that we have designated as our day of worship, and I'm not talking about Monday through Saturday that we're supposed to give God glory anyway. This is our day when we come together to worship God corporately and thank God for what he's done all week long. Even if I don't feel like it, after what I've given them folk on that job all week long, if I got to crawl here, that's what I'm going to do. Why? Because God has been good to me. I can't speak for anybody else. He's been good to me. And so whatever I do for God, I owe him that and more. And the nine, ten hours I spent on the job, that's just in that one place. That one place doing a job where if them folk decide, ah, we don't need no more. And who the first person we going to turn to? Lord, help me, please. But we going to do it with, I got all these bills to pay. I got this mortgage to pay. Well, it ain't, it ain't just, Lord, help me. We, it's Lord, help me with, with, with all of these. I, I, I got all these bills to pay. I don't even know how I'm going to get through. I, you know, I, how about just bless God? How about just tell God, well, thank you for the time that I spent here. If I got to go, I got to go. Thank you for the time I spent here. I trust you're going to make a way for me. How about that? But we got to do better. So we got to do better. And, and when we feel good spiritually, we're going to feel good physically. And when we feel good spiritually, we can give God what God is worthy of. And so God is concerned about the total man, the spiritual and the physical, from head to toe, God is concerned. Our bodies no longer belong to us. If we have accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, our bodies belong to God. And so we have to be concerned about what we're doing with them, what we're putting in them. We have to be concerned about all of that. And so we left off last week. We were talking about the importance of spiritual activity, getting involved spiritually, doing something. Our need to stay busy. The enemy loves it when we are inactive or idle. He loves that. If you ain't doing nothing for God, he ain't got no problem with you. Pastor Johnson used to say all the time, if the devil ain't bothering with you, that means you ain't doing nothing. At least not anything for God. Because, because when you begin to work for God, he's coming. And he'll send whoever is willing and it ain't always somebody from the outside. Hmm. <laughs> but he gets busy when you get busy. 
And so as long as you're not doing anything, you don't have a problem with that. But you got to remember when you're not doing anything. For by grace, you have been saved to work. God has a work for us to do. And again, God, we, God didn't save us to sit down. God saved us to work. The busier we are spiritually, the healthier we will become physically. I told y'all last week, we got it backwards. We're trying, to, you, we're trying to stay in shape physically first. But you can't stay in shape physically first without making sure your spiritual well-being is intact. Because everything starts from the mind. So you, we, we got we to gotta get it together spiritually. And then Paul, Paul says bodily exercise is fine. He encourages us. But it's your spiritual health that is more concerning than anything else. We got to get it together spiritually. So we have to get busy working spiritually. Titus 3.14, and let our people also learn to maintain good works, to meet urgent needs that they may not be unfruitful. God has not saved us to do good works just to be, God has not saved us to work and just be doing work. God has saved us to do good works. And those good works that God has saved us to do ought to be bearing fruit. Whatever we're doing, we need to be bearing fruit in the process. And if, you are not, and if we're not bearing fruit while we're working, then you got to take a look at what it is you're doing. And ask yourself, am I doing what God would have me to do? Or am I, or am I just doing something that will keep me busy? Or am I just doing something just to be doing something? And I said a while, a while back, uh, the, the best place for us to be working is the place that God would have us. Because that's the place we're going to be more effective. And you have to, know, you have to understand the abilities that God has given you and use those abilities that God has given you to do what God has given you that ability to do. God has not designed it for one person to do everything. It's not, not, he didn't design it for one person to do everything. I said that to simply say this here. Stop trying to do everything. And not accomplish anything. Because when we run around and we get so busy trying to do everything, at the end of the day, most of the time, we haven't accomplished anything. Or we haven't finished anything. We've started a whole lot of stuff. But how much of what we started have we finished? If all of us is working what God would have us to be working, we would accomplish a whole lot more. And we would progress a whole lot farther. In other words, I was trying not to say this, but in other words, we got to learn how to stay in our lane and do what God has gifted us to do. And that's where we're going to be most effective because remember, we're saved by grace and we're saved to do good works. And therefore, God expects us to be fruitful. We're not serving in ministry just to be a part of a ministry. God is expecting us to be fruitful. Jesus says any tree that's not bearing fruit is good for nothing but to be cut down. We can pretend to be working all we want to sooner or later. Everybody will know whether or not we've been working. 
God intends for us to bear fruit. As long as we're working, he, is a, he, he expects us to bear fruit. And so we can't just be working just to be working. We need to be working to, to, to bear fruit, but we also need to be meeting urgent needs. And there are a lot of needs that need to be met. We need to be meeting urgent needs, and that's one of the best works that we can do, is to be meeting urgent needs of those who are in need. We have been saved in order to serve. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 10, he says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. But, and his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Paul simply saying, I worked. I worked because I appreciated the fact that God saved me. And it's not, it's not about what you were or what you did back then. It's about who you are now and what you are doing now. The only people that's concerned about our past is us and the other folk who's still tripping on our past. Those are the only people who are worried about our past. Us and the people who We're worried about it because we're too concerned about what people say. Paul says, I persecuted the church. But he said, one thing I do know. It was by grace I am what I am. And the grace that God bestowed upon me when I realized what it was, he didn't, he didn't bestow it on me in vain. Because I worked. I worked harder than anybody else. And so Paul recognized what grace had done for him. We need to recognize what grace has done for us and serve out of grace. Because it was by grace that God saved us. Not anything that we did. We could have grown up in church and spent all our life in church God saved us by his grace. And Paul wanted to re show God his appreciation for what God had done. And so Paul worked. And he worked hard. If we really appreciate the grace that God has bestowed upon us, we will serve God out of grace. That's why Paul said in Romans 12 and 1, he says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. If you really appreciate what God has done for you, then serve God out of that attitude. And we'll, and we'll stay busy. We'll always be looking for something to do for God. We'll stay busy. And as I mentioned on last week, there's more than enough, enough to do. And so all we have to do is want to do it. Paul says, I labor more abundantly than all of them. Not that they didn't work, but I was grateful that God saved me. And so I worked. I worked hard. Matthew 20 and 27, and whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Another thing Pastor Johnson used to say all the time, but more, more so to the, to the preachers, he would say all the time, this is not a competition. We're, we're, we're running in a race. That's what Paul describes this Christian life as a race that we're running but we're not in competition with one another. We're not running to outrun one another. Christ gave this example to the disciples to show them humility and servitude. And he expected them to model what he was modeling. But they were too busy and caught up in pride. 
and worried about the wrong thing. That's why it's so important that our motives are right when it comes to what we're doing. Because if not, we can easily get caught up in pride. The Bible says that we are to be imitators of Christ. Christ says, I came not to be served, but I came to serve. And we've heard it time and time again. All we are is serving. And that's the mindset that we have to have, is that we're here to serve. We're here to serve God, and we're here to serve one another. And until we, until we change our mindset about serving God and serving one another, a lot of what we do will be motivated by pride. It's easy to get caught up. It's easy to fall into the snares of the enemy. And that's why it's so important that our motives have to be right behind what it is we're doing. And how we make that happen is that we do it out of servitude. And I said time and time again, you know, that there are, there are a number of people that, that, that does um, a lot of things here at the church that you all sometimes don't even see. And most people think, well, they're never here. They're usually here when you're not here. Doing a whole lot of stuff that gets done behind the scenes because they're constantly working. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not for show. It's not to be spoken well of. It's not, it's not for any of that. They do it because of their love for God. And they do it because they have a servant's heart. And we have to develop a servant attitude and not, and not think that we're in competition with, it, with, with each other. We, we, have to, we have to outdo whatever somebody else do. Whatever somebody else do, we have to make sure we do it better. It's not a competition. All God wants us to do is to, do, do, to work and to be fruitful in the work that we're doing. And if God is pleased, that's all that matters. As long as God is pleased. At the end of the day, our prayer is that somebody will be saved. And that's why we do what we're doing. But again, the disciples, the disciples um, were caught up in pride. And when Jesus tell them about him coming to serve, and not be served, uh, it exposed their pride because their minds were somewhere else and Christ was trying to get them on the same page that he was of being humble and having a servant attitude and to show them that what you all are, are fussing and fighting about is not his to give to you in the first place. And so we need to be more concerned about serving. We have, we have all of us, as I mentioned on last week, all of us have a work to do, have a specific work to do that God has given each and every last one of us. And as Paul talks about the church having many members and those many members, um, we have a lot of different gifts. There's a lot of different talents that different, um, diversities of gift that we have a lot and a lot of members and it takes all of us working what God would have each one of us doing what God would have each one of us doing to make it all come together and as I mentioned on last week when we're not in place or when we're out of place that means something's not getting done and so we all have to do it together because we all it's going to take 
all of us working together to make sure that the job gets done. And so therefore, we have to begin to hold one another accountable. And so not only be concerned about our own individual well-being, but be concerned about the well-being of our brothers and sisters as well. And no, it's not getting in people business when it's a genuine concern. Because all of us is dealing with something regardless of how, of how um, healthy we may think we are. All of us are most likely dealing with something. And so we have to be genuinely concerned about one another's well-being, which is what the Bible tells us to do. We have to be genuinely concerned about one another's well-being. And if we begin to hold one another accountable, we'll do a much better job of taking care of ourselves. Um, it's because, because some, some, some are, we're not all in the same position to be able to do the same thing. And sometimes there are those who need a little extra help. There are those who need a little extra push. And so that's what we have to be able to do with one another, to encourage one another, to help one another along the way, to be our brothers and sisters keepers. And so we got we to gotta do that um, because, again, um, it's going to take all of us working together. This is not, this is not, an individual thing that we're in. God is, has called and placed all us here together. And so we have to learn how to come together to do what's going to be beneficial for all. Paul says, if one hurt, all hurt. If one weep, all weep. If one rejoice, all rejoice. When we have a genuine concern for one another. And so we have to be concerned about one another's spiritual well-being. We have to be concerned about one another's physical well-being. Not just, Paul says that we're, we're not to just look out for our own interests, but we are to look out for the interests of others. Our brothers and sisters, we have to be able to look out for the interests of one another, to be more concerned about one another's well-being, spiritually and physically. And it's not just when we don't see somebody, we have to begin to, 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 to take the next step to do what's necessary, to call or either stop by. We, we, we have to show genuine concern. And it's one of the reasons why most people are reluctant to open up uh, because there have not been enough genuine concern about one another's well-being spiritually or physically. And so we have the mindset of that mentality that, well, they just trying to get business. They didn't. It's, not, it's, not, it's not about that. It's about caring for one another, looking out for one another. If we, if, we, if we can learn to do that, we'll all get along much better. It, we're, 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 we're better if we all learn to do it together than all of us trying to do it individually. It works a whole lot better that way. First Corinthians, so each one of us individually have work to do. First Corinthians 12, 6 and 7, which I was talking about earlier. And there are diversities of operations, uh, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with it. God has given, God has given us again. He's given us these gifts. He's given us these talents, these diversities of gifts, and the Holy Spirit uses them at his discretion. Those, as we, as we learned in, in earlier lessons, um, some of those gifts that he's given are manifestation gifts um, that the Holy Spirit uses at his discretion. They are not yours. So you can't try to harbor them. They're not yours. God, God, God has given us those gifts and the Holy Spirit um, brings them out of us at his discretion. And it's to benefit 
others. That's why I keep saying we have to learn how to get along with one another. We have to learn how to care for one another, to help one another along the way. Because, again, we're all in the same boat, striving for the same thing. And the more we help one another, the easier the journey it becomes. If we can, if we can learn to work together. But, but, but the Holy Spirit gives these gifts to, the, to every man to profit with them. They're, they're, not, they're not just for us to have and for us to use to profit. But it's for the benefit of the glory of the kingdom of God. And it's for the glory of God. And that's why he gives these gifts. And also he gives these gifts that we may be able to edify, to lift up the body. But they're not ours. In verse 18, but now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body as it has pleased them. God has, God has placed us exactly where he wants us. I know sometimes we think we got here by ourselves on our own. But God has strategically placed us where he wants us to be. That's why it's so important that we are doing what God would have us to do because that's the only way it can come together. If he strategically placed us in the place where we are, then we have to begin to do the work that God has called us to do. That's when we'll begin to see everything start to come together. We're doing the work that God has called us to do. God has placed us where he has placed us by design. Nothing happens by accident with God. God is well aware of what he's doing. Many times people will come to church and they'll say, God sent me here. Well, that becomes evident based on what you're doing. Because wherever God sends us, he's sending us to work. And your work makes it evident whether or not God has sent you. Because only what we do for God will last. But people will say all the time that God has sent them there. But then when you frustrate them or you get on their last nerve, they pack up and leave. Well, anytime you can so easily walk away from where you say God has placed you, then I have to question whether or not that was God who sent you. Our health is important to God. Our health is very important to God. And although our bodies are prone to sickness and disease, God is still overly concerned about our health. And, and for the most part, because as I was mentioning on last week, how God has designed the body, it will take care of itself. How he has designed the body, it will take care of itself. Most of what we go through with our physical health is because of our inability to do what's going to be beneficial for our health. And that's why I continue to stress we have to do better than what we've done in the past when it comes to our physical health. We got to do better than what we've done in the past because God is greatly concerned about our health. And it's not God, and it's not, and it's not God and by God's design that we spend our life on a hospital bed or we spend our, spend our life um, dealing with sickness and dealing with all of these health issues, that that's not what God has purposed for our life. And I understand that some things happen that, that, that happens during childbirth. Some things happen that, ha, uh, that are hereditary. That, that, there are a lot of sicknesses and diseases um, that, that, that naturally happen um, during, during birth. Um, 
But God did not design it for us to have to live our life with all of these health issues. He didn't didn't design it that way, which simply means that we have a responsibility to take care of what God has given us. And again, that's why I said earlier, our bodies does not belong to us. It belongs to God. And so we have to be more careful and pay more attention to what we're putting in our body. Not only, not only for that reason, because we have to be concerned about what it's going to do health-wise. How is it going to affect me health-wise? And, and before we began to take responsibility, we tortured our bodies. We put our bodies through a lot. Thank God for his mercy and his grace that we're not worse than what we are. Because we took our bodies through. But thanks be unto God that we have this opportunity now to do a much better job with with what God has given us. And so we have to take responsibility. And we have to take responsibility now and not continue to wait. We each need to exercise ourselves unto godliness. First, First Timothy 4, 7 and 8. But refuse profane and old wives' fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. And I was mentioned earlier, for bodily exercise profit is little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that is now and of the life which is to come. The physical health is good. We're encouraged to take care of ourselves physically, but it's godly, godly exercising ourselves to godliness is what has the greater benefit in this life now. And in this life to come. And so it's the godliness that we are to exercise. That's why I say if we get it to right spiritually, we'll get it, to get it right physically. Because we're, 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 we're more conscious and aware of what we're doing now. Much more than we were in the past. Had we known now. Well, had we known then what we know now. When we were doing what we were doing, a lot of it we wouldn't have done now. Because now, we're paying for a lot of it. It may have been fun when we were doing it then. Because we weren't thinking about down the road. And so a lot of it now, we're paying for it now. So had we known then what we know now, a lot of things we'd have done a little differently. But God, again, has given us this opportunity now to correct a lot of what we've messed up then and to do better with what we have now. And so Paul encourages us to exercise ourselves to godliness, still do. Take care of yourself physically. And as I mentioned on last week and the week before, there's a whole lot of things you can do around the house because, you know, um, many many of us are up in age now and a lot of things that we can't do um, um, because of our physicality or because of our age, but there's a whole lot of other things that we can do. All we got to do is just be a little creative. That's all, that's all we got to do is be a little creative and, and, and just to do some of these simple things five, ten minutes a day makes a world of difference. Make, it, makes a, it makes a world of difference. You know, as I mentioned on last week, when we're, when we're doing things around the house, um, just, just turn them into exercise routines. You know, put a little, put a little more enthusiasm into what you're doing. You know, but we can no longer continue to do nothing. 
because it's not helping us health-wise. And so even though Paul encouraged us to godly exercise, we still have to take care of ourselves physically. And so we're encouraged to take care of ourselves physically, do a little exercise, um, do a little something in the morning, walk a little, a little brisk walk. I mean, you'd be amazed what a 10-minute walk of a day will do. You'd be amazed. Because number one, what it does is, is, is it helps to stimulate and get your blood circulating. If you only knew the problems that come from poor blood circulation, and most of that has come from just sitting around doing nothing. And those, those, those hours that we spend around sitting nothing, we could walk around the block. You ain't got to run a marathon. I told you, you got to run a marathon. Just a little brisk walk, whatever. It, it, it'll, it'll, it'll do wonders for you. you you'll, feel, you'll feel a lot better because this is the thing. The healthier we are, the better we feel. When, when, we're not, when we're not in a healthy state, we feel miserable. We don't want to do nothing. We don't want to go nowhere. We don't want to participate in nothing. But when you feel good, you become very active. And so that's what, that's what it's all about. That's, 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 the, that's the life that God has called us to live, an abundant life. And we can't live an abundant life if we're not physically and spiritually fit to do so. We can't live an abundant life. And so we have to do, we have to do more. And so again, be creative. Don't, don't, don't just say, well, I can't do that, I can't do that. That's a whole lot that we can do. Just do something, just as I mentioned about, you know, um, going to the doctors. You, you don't have to like doctors. You don't, have, you don't have to like hospitals, but at least go get a checkup. I said a week before last. You know, if, if, if you have a sickness, how, how do you know it's cured? How do you know it's gone? Unless you go to the doctor and they confirm it. And one of the things that has, that has hurt us health-wise is that we, we, we wait too late to go to the doctor. We have things going on and we sit back and we just wait and wait and wait and and, and we end up too. We we end up going too late, you know. And one and one of the and one of the reasons why, you know, they 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 changed the age on men going and getting um, getting colonoscopies, um, because when when most when most men finally went to the doctor, you know, the the prostate cancer was already in in late stage, but had they gone at least for a checkup. You may have known earlier. And that's why I say at least go and get a checkup. That, if nothing else, get, get checked out. If, if you, if don't, don't, just, don't, don't just say, you know, I'm, I'm all right or I believe I'm all right because nothing may not be going on. You have no clue sometimes what's going on internally. That could be a number of things going on that you have no clue about. And again, what happens is it's going on so long because we haven't been checked out that by the time, by the time it really hit us, it's, 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 it's sometimes too late. And so as I mentioned on last week, God gave doctors and nurses the ability to do what they do. And so use them. Because you have to, you, you want to know if you're okay. And the only way to find out if you're okay is to go and find out. And I, and I, and I gave the example of the, of the lepers. When Jesus healed them, he told them, now go show yourself to the priest and get clearance. And so in order to know if everything is well with you, you got to go and find out. And so it's all a part of, taking care of the total, the total, the physical, 
and the spiritual. We got to know what's going on and we got to go and find out what's going on. And we have to take better responsibility or better care of our own uh, well-being and stop just leaving our well-being in the hands of others. Find out for yourself, know for yourself what's going on. Ask questions. You got to ask questions. What, when, why, how, if nothing else? Let's go back to the basics. But you got to ask questions. And sometimes we don't ask enough questions or we don't ask the right question. You know, I, I understand the doctor is the doctor, the nurse is the nurse, and we're not trying to take their place. But ask questions. You got to ask questions so you'll know what's going on. Again, God is concerned about the total man. Not, 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 not just a portion of us. God is concerned about the total man, our spiritual well-being and our physical well-being. God wants us, God wants us well, so he's concerned about both. And so you got to find out. Any questions, any comments, any concerns, any last-second thoughts? Did y'all have questions up there? Ooh, Lordy. That's good. We must work while there is time and opportunity. Galatians 6 and 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in doing in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And we're talking again about spiritual activity, to be, to be um, spiritually active, get busy doing something. And don't, and don't grow weary in your well-doing. You'll reap a harvest if you faint not. But we got we to gotta get busy um, again. There is a lot to do in the body of Christ. And there is a lot to do when it comes to upbuilding God's kingdom. So we got to get busy working. Um, if you're still sitting, you've sat long enough. It's time to get busy working. All hands on deck. Again, it takes, it takes all of us. I told y'all last week, you go out there at that parking lot and your car don't start. It means something, something ain't functioning properly. And, I, and, 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 and so the church is the same way. And as I mentioned on last week, sometimes when it's not functioning properly, we don't, we don't always see it. We don't always see it. Sometimes when your battery is going dead, it'll give you a sign. It'll give that long sign. Uh, 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 and then it may finally fire up. And, and we're so glad it crunk up that we don't even think, okay, let me go and get a battery now. No, we're going to keep on driving. We're going we to keep on driving until you go out there and, that's all it's gonna, you ain't gonna even get that. Clank. Oh my God, what's going on? Uh, you need a battery. You know, we'll we'll push it. And so and so the church is the same way. That's how God has designed the church. God has designed the church the same way. And so everybody have to be plugged in where God would have you. And so that again, Paul says, until we all come together in the unity, that means all of us working together, doing what God has called us to do. And so as I mentioned on last week, when we're, when we're not in place or, 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 or we're not functioning as we're supposed to be functioning, then the church is lacking. And we don't always see it until it's too late. We don't always see it until it's too late. It's the, it's the same thing with our physical bodies. We, we from time to time may feel pain, but because it come and go, we don't give another thought to it. And then it comes, and it don't leave. Now we're scared. You have to know what's going on when it happens. If our bodies are not doing what it's supposed to be doing, that means something's not right. And you got to go and find out. You got you to go and find out. And I know, I know it can be a scary, it could be a scary situation because there's a, that, there's, a, there's a lot that goes on with our bodies. It could be a scary situation, but it's better to know than to not know. Because at, at least when you know, now you can do something about it. But when you don't know, the only option you have, do I just live my life with this pain until... Oh, 
Jesus says, I came that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. And if you're going to live an abundant life, that means you have to take care of yourself. You have, you have to take care of yourself again. When we, when, we, when, we, when we feel better, when we take care of ourselves, we feel much better. We feel much better when we take care of ourselves. And we participate more when we feel good about ourselves. And so we have to we, we, we have to promise ourselves that we're going to do a much better job than we've done in the past of getting ourselves together spiritually as well as physically. Because again, God is concerned about our total well-being. And as God is concerned about our total well-being, so should we be concerned about our total well-being. Our bodies belong to God. And so whatever we give God in these bodies, we ought to want to give him the very best because it's his. So we have to do a better job. Any questions, any comments? Oh, you had a question like that, Tim? <laughs> no, I was, just, I was just messing with you. Well, we certainly thank God for, again, for each and every one of you. Thank God for this. Thank you all for this, for this opportunity that we had to share in this, in this um, Bible study hour. We thank God so very much for those that have tuned in. Uh, virtually um, to this Bible study hour. We pray that something was said or done that has inspired or encouraged you. And, and again, um, our life is important to God. And so we have to live our life like it's important to us as well. Our life for most people, don't seem to be important to their about, until they're about to lose their life. So we have to, we, we have to um, live our life as if we're concerned about our life. Because God is concerned about it. So we ought to be just as concerned about it. And... The healthier we are, the better off we'll feel. You was you were saying something, Miss Dijon? Okay. <laughs> well, all righty then. Um, again, thank you all so very much. Um, we pray that something was said or done that has inspired you. And if you have never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, and we pray that you will come to the place of accepting and receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and being saved. Um, time is winding up. And the Bible says none of us know the day or the hour when Christ will return. And so we want to be ready. And the Bible also tells us that um, except ye be born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. And so Paul simply says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. It's as simple as that. And so give your life to Christ while you still have time. Uh, let us receive. Yes, we got an announcement. Huh? A reminder. Oh, OK. Reminder. Oh, OK. Right. Right along with our lesson. Because I told you we wanted to make sure. Um, we, we're dealing with the total man. And so uh, this Saturday, this Saturday um, there will be um, medical doctors from Chin's Senior Medical Center. They'll be here this Saturday. Um, it's a free event um, for seniors because, you know, they, they basically deal with a lot of seniors. Um, but it's a senior um, church health fair. They're going to be here on Saturday, November the 13th from 11 until 1. 
and they're going to have blood pressure screening, blood sugar screening. Um, they'll have some giveaways, um, um, medications provided on site, on site tests and screening, and door to door transportation available. And so, if you know any of our seniors who may want to come or may need to come, they'll have door to door transportation. Um, for more information, um, um, you can contact, I do not know how to pronounce that name. Shaquia? Um, phone number? <laughs> Shaquia? Shaquia? Shaquia, something like that. 786-559-0218. Again, that phone number. Um, 786-559-0218. If you need more information, um, but they will be here Saturday from 11 um, until 1. And just, just let me just say this here before um, I, I, I close out in prayer, because this is one of the things that we men mentioned earlier when we were talking, when we began this lesson. Um, because when we have um, programs like this where they come and they do um, these health fairs, um, you never miss your water till your well run dry. Our communities give the least participation. But when you look percentage-wise, our communities are suffering more from health conditions. But we give the least participation when they come. And I said... You never miss your water till your well run dry. You got to understand something. That sooner or later, it's going to be cut out. We have a number of, of people that, that, that are without any kind of health care. Some we may even know. And so we ought to encourage them because if this is the only health um, benefit they can get at the moment, then we ought to encourage them to come. If we need to, we need to bring them to come. At least they're getting some kind of medical attention. But 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 eventually, because it happens with everything, if 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 people are not participating in what we're trying to do, then sooner or later we'll cut it out. I'm just saying. And you have to understand. These are people who are volunteering their time. These are people who make a lot of money. And they're sacrificing that to come and do these health fairs. They don't get paid for this. It's volunteer. And they don't get paid for this. And so we have to learn how to take advantage of these things when they, when, when they come. I'm just saying. Okay, we're ready to pray now. Y'all have any questions now? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you again for this time and opportunity. Thank you for um, the presence of your Holy Spirit in this place, leading and guiding us in this Bible study hour. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you've done and for all you're doing, for all that you continue to do. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help us to take better responsibility of our spiritual well-being as well as our physical well-being, Heavenly Father, because as the Bible encourages us, that you are concerned with uh, the total man, Heavenly Father, with our total well-being. And so we're just praying, Heavenly Father, that we'll do a much better job than we have done in the past and that we will hold one another accountable, Heavenly Father. God, I pray your will be done in each and every one of our life. We pray a very special prayer for all of our senior saints, Heavenly Father, for all of our sick and shut in. For all of our bereaved families, Heavenly Father, we just pray for healing. We pray for strength. We pray for comfort according to your will. We pray for our leaders around this world, Heavenly Father. We pray for this nation. We pray for our brothers and sisters around this world that are dealing with sickness, that is dealing with death. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those that are dealing with natural disasters, Heavenly Father. God, we just pray your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We're praying for traveling mercy as we depart from this place. Keep your hedge of protection around us. Keep us from hurt, harm, and danger, seen and unseen, that we may arrive at our destination safely. And as we do, Father, we'll continue to give you all the glory, honor, and praise that you're worthy of. In Jesus the Christ's name we pray. 
Amen.